Let's see how to make friends. Oh, this will be helpful. How to be a carrier pigeon of good feelings. <laughs> how to praise with perfect timing. Awesome. Yeah, this is going to be really good. Oh, hey, how you doing? I am so glad to see you because like, I, it's been so much drama here in these first six weeks. The whole team hates me. It's I don't know how this happened. It's just like one thing after another, and all of a sudden, it's like a nightmare. And the press, they hate me. They they everybody negative, downcast, pessimistic. It's awful. And the questions they ask, it's just a nightmare. The pitch, though, this is the crazy thing. We're doing okay, but not really, but kind of. I'll tell you more about that. But if if none of that interests you, we are going to play Basil, who's supposed to be in first place, but they're doing worse than we are. So it should be entertaining. We're both kind of desperate to get back to where we should be. And I hope you'll stick around because like, I don't have anybody else to hang out in here in Switzerland. I have no friends. The players hate me. The press hates me. Everybody, the fans probably hate me too. So if you could stick around and watch, that'd be like totally awesome. See you there. Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome back to Walkabout Europe, the Football Manager 21 Journeyman Save, where we can only move between teams in the club when we've walked or exercised the equivalent distance in real life. So six weeks at St. Gallen. You figure you've got this little honeymoon period where things are going to be okay and everyone's going to like you and life's going to be wonderful until you like totally screw stuff up at some point down the line. But yeah, that wasn't the case. We had a little problem. Let me tell you a story. We'll start there. I want to tell you about that. Then we'll take a look at results on the table. We have some transfers to look at, and then we're going to face off against Basil. So a lot of things to go through. Let's get busy. First of all, it all starts with this one player right here, Quinton Macieres. He's a real person. I'm sure somewhere out there, Quinton is is alive and enjoying his life, but he has made my life, his ver football manager version of himself, has made my life miserable for our six weeks here at St. Gallen. It all started innocently enough with about a week to go before the transfer deadline. An offer came in for Quinton for like 1.3 million or something like that. Now, Quinton's a Swiss player, and so we really need to keep our Swiss players because we have to have eight of them on the roster. And actually, Quinton's a starting right back. He's pretty good. And I don't have another right back, so I don't want to lose him. So it's a pretty easy answer. No, we're not selling our Swiss players. We're not selling our starting right back. We're not selling him for way less than what he's worth. Quinton, however, was feeling a little bit different. He got fairly upset, and his agent came in and confronted me and said, why did you refuse that offer? I, that's my dream club. I want to go there. And then I said, oh, really? And he was pretty insistent. So I said, finally, let me get a replacement for you, and then I'll sell you. And he's like, no, that's not fair because my, this is my one chance. I got to go now. That kind of ticked me off. So I kind of said something that didn't leave the relationship all that good, figuring like, well, fine, he's going to be isolated on the team. So what's the big deal? Turns out he wasn't isolated. He was in the core social group. He went to all the teammates. The next thing I know is every single player on the team has supporting Quinton against the manager. I'm the new manager. Everybody hates me. Things have gone sideways pretty quickly. So I said, we better have a team meeting. It's that bad. If you look on the dynamics here, now it's a little bit better now, but if you look on the dynamics here under managerial support on the top, bright red all the way full with an abysmal rating. I've never seen that before. I didn't even know that word existed in this game. So it was pretty bad, not good at all. So anyway, to go back to our Quinton saga though, I called a team meeting and somewhere in the past couple weeks, I was given some advice by someone who will remain nameless, who they said, just tell them that you did it for the betterment of the team. So I tried that. Everybody hated it and said, we just want to play with people that want to be here. If he doesn't want to be here, just let him go. That ticked the team off even more. So I went back to Quinton and I said, fine, I'll promise, I promise to sell you if we get an offer in at 1.9 million, which is still not enough, but it was the best I could get him down to. So fast forward two days, we get an offer in for 1.3 million with all those conditional things that like may or may not happen. Like he wins the World Cup and scores the like a hat trick in the final game or something like that. So I'm like, that's not a 1.9 million offer. That's like a 1.3 million offer with all these garbage clauses onto it. It's non-negotiable. So bang, I rejected it. Quinton, however, didn't really look at it that way. He felt like that was a $1.9 million offer. So he and his agent were steamed even more, came in and said, you promised to sell me and now you didn't sell me. You broke your promise. The whole team's even more upset. This is level two we've gone to now. Quinton's even more upset. The whole thing's going sideways really quickly. I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? So I go, fine, I'll sell you. The next offer that comes in, I'll sell you for. It. 
So fast forward another day or two, we're getting like about two days before the transfer deadline. Another few offers come in, like a half dozen come in for him. He's a pretty popular guy because 1.9 million is a cheap price for him too. So all these offers come in, but right at the top, there's a quote from Quinton, his words in quotation marks who say, don't worry about this offer as long as you sell me within the time period that you have promised. And I said, well, what's that promise? 210 days. So I said, perfect. I'll just refuse these offers and I'll sell you over the winter transfer. So I refused all the offers again. However, apparently Quinton didn't mean that. That's not at all what he meant because this time he went absolutely ballistic, totally freaked out. The rest of the team is all supporting him. Morale's in the tank and everything's gone completely sideways. So yeah, that was pretty dramatic there. Finally, what happened is I sold him for 1.9 million after the transfer window ended and we scrambled to find a right back in there. But still, the team stayed like at abysmal for the longest time. Only a little while ago did it finally come down here to kind of like halfway red. And then every single time I've been in the game, I've been going into the squad and I've been going root fias, interaction, speak about, praise player, praise conduct, like this, put arm around. As vice captain, yay, I understand what you're saying, and he's happy. So I'm just doing this all the time, praising their training, praising them in games, just praise, 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 praise. We finally got it down to this like average with a little tick of red. However, if you look on happiness, the big problem now is we had, just the other day we had five. Now we're down to four players who are dissatisfied and want to move on to another club. So we got to sort that out. Otherwise, at the winter transfer window, we're going to lose a lot of our better players. These are good players, our captains too. So the whole team dynamic situation isn't over yet. Now, that was a super long story. Let's take a look at something that's kind of half good and half bad, I think. Results on the pitch. That may be you wondering, like, how's the team done during this period? I have something pretty cool to say. Since we've taken over, month and a half, we haven't lost. Check it. Look at that. All yellow and green. You might be saying like, wow, that's amazing. That's really good. How can you be unhappy? Well, apparently the team doesn't give me any credit for it. The team players still just like hate me. They just think we don't support the manager. So it's, I think that players just think it's all them that are doing it. The press doesn't seem to care either. They're still pessimistic and negative and all ticked off at it, asking questions why the team doesn't support me and stuff like that. So yeah, and it's not quite, I have to say, it's not quite as good as it looks. You might be thinking like, what, what possibly could you be complaining about? Well, here's the thing. If we filter out the Schweizer Cup in Europa League, in Europa League Conference League, you can see that up until our recent game three days ago, we'd only won one of five matches. We weren't doing very well. Now, we did have a 2-2 draw, say that again, a 2-2 draw against young boys that we played like half of our team was super exhausted from Europa Cup three days before that, and we played some sub players in and out. We still managed a 2-2 draw that we almost won. So that was pretty cool because Young Boys is supposed to be first or second place. But then we had like a 0-0 tie against Servette, which I think isn't that a napkin or something like that. Like, I don't know why we're playing napkins. But they're not supposed to be very good because they're like napkins and stuff. But anyway, yeah, we didn't do very well. 0-0 Vaduz is terrible and we drew them in the match. Zurich wasn't, yeah. So we just haven't been doing that well. And in the league, now we did look good against Sion, our last match. That's a pretty good sign and I'll share that too. So that means up until just three days ago, we were down in seventh and eighth place. Press was not happy, players are not happy, fans are not happy, owners aren't happy. The win the other day bumped us up to fifth. Now the thing is, we're not far away. We're three points away from second place. We're also three points away from the relegation zone. There's just not a lot of teams and not a lot of matches played. So these matches, these guns coming up are pretty critical. Today's match could be huge because if we lose, we're probably down back in seventh or eighth place. That's bad with a capital B. If we win, we could be up in like third place or fourth place. That's good with a capital G and maybe these players won't want to leave. So huge implications for this match coming up. The good part, the unequivocally good part, well, kind of anyway, not fully, because as I'll explain in a second, I had we had the most amazing match. In the Schweizer Cup, check it, we've won two matches against teams way below us. This match, however, against Martigny Sports. So there's some little club like four levels down underneath us. Take a look. I'm not sure if you can see it on the left-hand side. Shots on goal. 58 shots on goal we had. 23 on target, 5.67 XG, yet at the end of 120 minutes, it was a one-to-one -one draw. They had six shots to our 58. Went to penalty kicks. It was tied after four rounds of penalty kicks. The fifth kick, we made ours, and they missed theirs. And we, through the skin of our teeth, got through this round. Their goalkeeper had a 9.0 rating. 
Part of it was because we were playing the striker whose name is Babich. We won the next round anyway, two to one, somewhat convincingly. That we have this player, Babich, who I posted it on Twitter, Boris Babich. After we played our first match, we got a note from Boris Babich from our press that Boris Babich hadn't scored in 35 matches. I'm thinking, oh, that's not too bad. He's the goalkeeper, right? No, he's a striker. Hadn't scored for 35 matches. He was terrible in that game where he had 58 shots. We got him the ball in front like 10 times, and he kept missing it. Finally, just a little while ago, Boris Babich, Boris Babich has scored. Must have been over 40 games by the time we finally got him a goal. That wasn't a good thing either. But unequivocally, our last thing before we belabor this point too much, the last thing is Europa League check it. We played Royal Antwerp in a home and away in a playoff to get into the group stage of Europa League and we beat them 4-2 on aggregate. Then we had our first match against Lech Poznan, which is a Polish team, right? Yeah. And we beat them 2-0 away on the road. Now, we're going to get massacred against Hertha and Krasnodar is going to be a really, really tough match that we're most likely not going to win. So we could conceivably get third place in that group, which would give us a playoff into the knockout round. That's about as best I think we could hope for because we're basically just supposed to show up for this thing. We're not supposed to win. So I'm super happy about that. It's almost like the better teams we play, the better we do. The worse teams we play, the worse we do. I don't quite get it. I'm still kind of confused. But anyway, that's pretty much everything that's happened. What I want to do now, though, because it's going to be kind of a longer episode, but a lot's happened, right? I want to show you some of our transfers because we were kind of busy. The biggest problem we had was we didn't have enough depth. We had literally one player at every position. Then we lost our right back. We didn't really have a right back. So my goal was to get us some depth as quickly as we can. However, at this level, two million pounds in, in transfer money really isn't a lot to get you a lot of depth. I mean, we could really spend that kind of money on maybe one or two starters, but I didn't want to do that. We needed more people. So I was scrambling, scrambling, scrambling to try to find people that could, we could put into our lineup. And we did some couple things here. First of all, I wanted to show you one thing. This player we brought in, Faik Aydin. You remember him? Yeah, his family is the peanut farmer. We had him at Verklemark, right? He comes from Turkey, the southeast corner down near Syria. And his dad was upset with Faik because he wanted to play soccer instead of running the family business. He was making 60 pounds a week for Verklemark. And he's a super hard worker. I don't think he's ever going to play for us. But I didn't have any friends here either. So I said, Faik, he like holds me in the highest ad admiration. So I signed him for like a thousand pounds. He's getting 550 pounds per week. His family's happy because he can send extra money back to the peanut farm. It's pretty cool. He's down on the U21s. He's never going to play for us, but I don't really care. I I just wanted to make him happy and have someone to talk to that doesn't hate me on the team. So I thought that was pretty cool. But that's a little bit of a side story. Here we go. Daishan Ridan. He's our second striker now. Brought him in. Apparently he was a wonder kid. Robbie DeYoung posted a comment in the video, last video, who said he was an amazing wonder kid last year. I, I didn't know about him, but he was on a free. So we brought him in, gave him a trial, and then signed him for 4,000 pounds per week. He's actually, he wasn't doing very well, but he's got two goals now and two appearances and assists with a 7.3 rating. So he's looking, starting to look pretty sharp for us. I think he's not playing today because he played in the match three days ago. We've got a few other players in here too. Philip Jagliel Jagiello who comes in as a midfielder, because again, we had no depth at midfield, no depth at striker, no depth at wings, no depth at center and back. We had depth in the outside backs, but then we lost one of them. But just all around, looks like to be a pretty good solid player. He's our highest rated valued player at 5.7 million. We got him on a free too. So we had a couple players come in like that on freeze. Then that was pretty much it. However, I scrambled and got a right back, this guy Solomon Bana. We just basically raided Hertha's uh, in the Bundesliga's. I finally realized, oh wait, I can get loans from the Bundesliga. Those are probably pretty good. That actually worked. We got three players in from Schalke and we got one more coming in at the winter break. So we got this guy Klockner, who's a left and right winger. He's done pretty well. He's got a goal in Europa League coming in. Adds a lot of speed on the outside. We weren't a fast team, so I'm pretty happy about that. And then... Stanislav Failer, who came in and got hurt the first week here. But again, speed on the outside, acceleration 15, pace of 16, good crossing and good dribbling. So it brings a little bit more electricity to our attack. And I think he's going to look good once he gets uninjured. We bring the, brought in a backup goalkeeper and again, then brought in this right back, who's kind of one of our two right backs now. He's not quite what I was hoping for. Uh, got him in on loan for 5000 a week, but he's better than nothing, right? For sure. So anyway, we've been busy and I think now we've got just about enough depth in the squad to cover some injuries to get us through this busy, crazy schedule. Because if you look at it, we have pretty much 
two matches a week until we have those kind of the international breaks and then two matches a week all the way up through the end of November into early December. So we really need a thick squad and I think we barely have enough if we don't get a lot of players don't get hurt, which unfortunately we have some players had start getting hurt. But that's enough of me babbling. I realize that probably went long, but there was a lot of drama here, a lot of stuff to cover. So I hope it was kind of interesting. And again, I don't have many friends here, so I'm probably just talking a lot longer than I probably normally would. However, it is time now. Let's jump in. I don't think there's anything else. We talked about transfers. Oh, oh, wait, wait, that's right. The point total contest. That's right, we had 16 people guess. Let's check out who's guessing our point totals for the year to be able to nickname a player. We'll be right back. Here are our 16 participants in Guess the Point Total Contest Year 2 edition. We have a wide range of numbers, don't we? Ralph Allwright guessed a high of 80. He's got a lot of confidence in us. Wolf Tracks on the other end of the spectrum with a 45. And everybody else scattered out with a wide range in between. Now, if we were to get fired right away today, we've only got 10 points. So Wolf Track is the leader and would win today. But that's probably not the most logical outcome. So to get an idea of how we're looking, I did a little bit of math and I figured 10 points in seven matches, how many points would that be out over 36 matches? 51 and a half points, FM Llama would be the winner based on our pace right now. But then I said, wait a second, what if you took out the match that we weren't here for, right? So then it would be 10, mat 10 points over six matches times 35, we would end up with 58 points. JWM FM would be the winner so far. But it's early, early days, so it's really anybody is still in play at any end of the spectrum. We'll check on on this from time to time as we go through the season. Thanks everybody for playing. All right, so it is finally time now. And by the way, the winner of the point total contest gets to nickname a player. And we talked about making it a regen player, but let's just make it simple. You can nickname any player on the team that you'd like. So FM Green, if you see someone you want to slap a nickname onto, let me know. It could be a current starter, real player, new gen, anything you want. Let's jump in finally and see how we do here against Basil. So we are going with our 4-2-3-1. It's the lineup that they played last year, and I think it mean, makes the most sense for the players that we have. Most of the players playing today are players that were with the team last year or with the team when we came in. The only player that we signed is this right back, Bana, who's going to be out on the right side now. He's in on loan from Schalke for us. Oh wait, he's from Red Bull Leipzig, I think is where he comes in. So uh, hopefully he can play pretty well. Midfielders and everybody else pretty good. Anderson up a target man at striker. He's done actually pretty well. Three matches, three goals so far. He's our 33-year-old, and he's been here for a long time, I think. Been here for three or four years. Um, never really done well with the target man, but so far he's looked pretty good. So we'll talk more about these players as they get going through here, and let's jump into the match now. I'm just going to talk to the players, and we'll get out there on the pitch. So we'll see you in a sec. All right, we are starting, and our green and whites going from right to left. Basil going the other way. Now, they are predicted to finish first in the league, and like last year, I think we had a really good start, and then as soon as we got to YouTube, we lost. So I am fully expecting us to get mauled in this episode because it's YouTube, and we just haven't done all that well on YouTube. But we're off to a somewhat positive start here. Long shot by Pusic. Pusic is like mini Pulisic, right? Because he's just Pusic, just miss, Pulisic meaning missing a couple letters and missing a couple levels of ability, I think, too. But... We like him out on the right wing. We'll try to talk a little bit about some of these players, but um, basically it's been trying to, we have having two matches a week, so it's been a really tiring time. Just really trying to get in as many healthy players and fresh players as we can so that people aren't fatigued. Wow, this game ticking along here. We've got four shots, three on target with the 0.2 XG, so it's it looking pretty good here. Now, Encourage, even though the team hates me, they seem to be calmed down a little bit since they're, over-the-top reaction about the whole Masiera guy sell, being sold, but they do respond to encouragement cheers, so let's hopefully that can help. 21 minutes in, we have seven shots to their four. We are playing balanced because we're on the road here. Dare we lean into this here? No highlights though, no good shots. Let's go 30 minutes. Yeah, and let's go. We've been playing positive a little bit lately, kind of take it to them and stick it to them. Now, Basil, I don't quite get it. They're supposed to be finish in first place they're predicted to finish in first place you know with young boys kind of chasing them but basically at a canter here or at least be a lot solider than eighth place but they have yet to start off pretty good here i am liking our team though on the whole our our, our team seems to be fairly we've got players at every position and if we can add support and kind of another tier of those players in there and keep people fresh i think uh we might be okay 
super exciting that was. Let's go to the dressing room. I'll talk to him. Then we'll be right back out. All right, second half. Here we go. We've uh, our ratings are pretty good, and I'm mean, again nine shots to zero. We're we're playing a high, we're playing high up the pitch, which uh, seems to be generating a pretty kind of a high press. But we have to be careful that players don't get exhausted. It seems like this update is making that high press. I don't know, making the high press a little bit harder to sustain over a whole game. 60 minutes in, and we still have no goals. We have not had a shot here in the second half. Um, I'm going to pause here and think. We might make some tactical changes, maybe to try to play the ball in behind or something. We get some fresh legs in, so we'll be right back. All right, we're just going to try to pass into space and then go 10 more minutes. Uh-oh, free kick for them. Cleared away. Get there. Ah, Anderson, our striker, is somewhat slow here. Hulsjäger takes it forward. He's playing not usually our center attacking mid, but our other center attacking mid is tired. Fajili, usually our right back, again plays it forward. Puzic into Huesliger. Forward again. Back outside to Bonner, our acquired right back. A nice cross inside, and we score! A header from our target man, Sebastian Anderson. The six foot three inch striker puts us up 1 0 away to Basil. Ho ho! Well, well now. Things get interestinger and interestinger. Wow, what a nice cross. I don't think Bonner's crossing is all that good either. I think it's like a six or something like that. But that was a pretty spectacular cross there. Maybe just someone didn't tell him his crossing's a six. Let's uh, shift back into balance here and, and stay that way. Pass into space. Maybe got us a little bit stuff going here, but let's calm it down a little bit. Okay, what's going on? Free kick from at the edge of the box here. We have not looked too good on these. Ruiz can't... Oh! A lot of that. Close but no cigar kind of thing. Okay, we are running out of gas in the middle, as they are. I think they had a game three days ago as well. 70 minutes in, it's time for us to make some subs. I know one of our midfielders is going to be out of gas, but I'm going to think and we're going to do something here. I'll be right back. All right, we're going to bring in our uh, one of our loanies in from Hertha there. Klockner comes out on the left wing. He's got great speed, and I think late in the game... Oh, yes! Hulsager with a header on a free kick. We just practiced those in training, too. Free kicks. We did, we did. No kidding. Pulisic, or Pusic, Pulisic's little brother. Huesager, top right corner. 2-0. All righty. We don't need to see it 500 times here. It's good. So, 15 minutes in. Here we go, another highlight. Hopefully this stays in this end. Huesager in front. Oh, another one. Klockner, our sub with a header. Three plays, th all three goals off the head, right? It's looking pretty good. Oh, I like that. There's nothing like the feeling in this game when you make a sub and then they score a goal, right? I mean, it's just boom, top left corner. Wow, this would be a huge win for us because I think this might... Okay, one of our defenders, Sorensen, is completely out of gas. So I'm going to take a second here. I'm going to make one more sub. I'll be right back. Then I'll continue that thought. All right, we're going to sub out that center back who is tired. Then I think next oh, long pass into space to Bona. Cuts in front. What? Was that a corner? I thought maybe it was a penalty for a second there. Simon Follett comes in. Long cross. Chipped away. Pusic picks it up again in front. Oh, four. Sebastian Anderson with the brace. We've got like four goals in 15 minutes. Oh, this is the best game ever. Wow, I thought for sure we were going to lose on YouTube. I just figured, okay, yeah. Like, we, we've been doing okay. Our offense seems to have really come to life here in the past week, too, because we weren't scoring goals. I think maybe it just took the team a little while to kind of get into place there. But, wow, okay. So, let's go to 80 minutes. And I'm going to, okay, so Fajili, our center midfielder, is completely out of gas, as is our striker. We're going to make our last sub, and then we'll be right back. All right, we brought in uh, our free agent pickup, Jaglietto, at midfield to replace our tired midfielder. Booted away. Here comes Basil. We should slow things down here, too, shouldn't we? Yeah, I'm just going to make that change. I'll be right back. I don't want Broken up by Mulheim. Back to Kolar, our goalkeeper. I think I saw an image on Twitter of Kolar in real life getting a foot right in the face, and I wonder if it's that same keeper. Maybe someone knows. Pusic breaks down and around. He's been really good on the outside. Bona back to Jaglietto. We subbed in. Tipped in front. Hulsager picks up a brace. It's 5-0. 
Oh, we're having a party at Basil's home turf. Wow. It was nil-nil at 60-something minutes, wasn't it? Jaglietto with the assist? No, probably not, right? All righty. Proceed with the tactical changes. Yes. Now let's just kill this one out. Wow, switching into passing into space really seemed to help there. Let's uh, slow it down a little bit more. We're going to waste a lot of time. And confirm changes. Let's just try to kill this one out. 89. Love to get the clean sheet here, too. That'd be nice. Wow, Hulsager with a 9.4. There it is. 25. Basil didn't have a shot. Oh, my goodness. They're supposed to win the league. <laughs> What's going on? I don't understand. Oh, my. I'm very pleased. Yeah, outstretched arms. Very pleased with the result in your performance. We need to praise some individuals here, too, don't we? So let's do individuals. Sebastian Anderson, because I'm trying to make friends still. Pusic with an 8.7. Hulsager with a 9.6. Anderson with an 8.9. And Murheim with a 7.7. .7. We want to play as the defender. Outstretched arms. I'm pleased with how you did tonight. Very good. Well, there you have it. All righty. So here we are back. If we look at the table now, we're up to third place. Perfect. So what results went our way. And the goal differential, ours is 10. So it's looking pretty good. I don't know what to make of that result. And I don't know what to make of the fact that Basil, who I believe, I'm pretty sure... They're predicted they're six to five odds to win the league. And they're in ninth place. And we just played them on the road at their stadium and beat them 5-0. I don't know what's going on. I have no idea what's going on. If you understand this, let me know. But this was a rather long episode. I hope you've enjoyed it again. I don't have any friends on the team yet, so I'm hoping that you could put up with me for a little bit longer. We'll come back again. There's a lot of matches, so I think it might be hard to play through with them by Tuesday because I'm making this kind of late. So I don't know what the schedule is for episodes this week, but some point this week in the middle, we could get out the next episode. I think I'll be able to make it to the end of October, and then I'll probably want to go in because I don't think it'd take too long to go two months. So we'll probably see you back for maybe the Schweiz Horizon Cup third round, or maybe Europa League against Hertha or something like that. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. If any thoughts on what's going on or team morale or how to make this all work, I'm all ears and would love to hear them. But boy, that result was uh, was a pretty mysterious one as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so take care, everybody. Have a great start to the week.